Hello, I'm Dr. Thad Stappenbeck with the Lerner Research Institute. Today, I'm talking with two Cleveland Clinic researchers who both have really exciting research projects underway as part of our COVID-19 response. Dr. Christine McDonald is a researcher in the Lerner Research Institute's Department of Inflammation and Immunity, specializing in auto-inflammatory diseases. And Dr. Sean Stauffer is director of the Cleveland Clinic Center for Therapeutics Discovery, promoting the translation of basic science discoveries into new therapeutics. We welcome you both. Dr. McDonald, let's start uh, by setting the stage for your COVID-19 research. Can you help us understand the scope and importance of the work that's now underway in your lab? Well, this is a very fast moving field where we're understanding more and more about what COVID-19 is every single day. And so being able to uh, act on those new discoveries quickly is, is key. We are actually looking at two different aspects of COVID-19 disease. One that's exploring more of how the disease occurs and what cells that are in your blood may be driving some of the complications. Another arm of our research is trying to understand how we can target some of these natural defenses to viruses to test therapeutics to stop the virus in its tracks before it develops a COVID-19 disease. We have a drug right now that uh, was originally designed several years ago by another member of our faculty, Dr. Stark. And what we found is that it not only amplifies a natural defense against viruses called interferons, but it also may induce an anti-inflammatory effect that would prevent the inflammatory storm that's occurring in these patients that is so harmful to them. So we're trying to understand how we can get these cells to have an appropriate or a balanced attack to the virus. Great. So you're taking really both approaches. You're trying to stop the virus in its tracks very early on, and then you're trying to, to basically train the immune system to turn off at the right time when people get infections. Dr. Stauffer, can you tell us about the Center of Therapeutic Discovery and the vital role that it plays in research? In my group, what we focus on are antivirals. So rather than trying to manipulate the human immune system and its response, we're focusing on developing safe therapeutics that directly target these viruses. I've actually had a long interest in studying SARS, the virus that causes COVID-19. So there are a number of human coronaviruses that we know a fair amount about. The future really is about being ready for the next potential coronavirus, the next outbreak, which could take on a different form. Right now, our main focus is developing antivirals that target the virus that causes COVID-19. Yeah. Dr. McDonald, you were focused on other projects uh, before COVID-19 came along. What were the processes uh, that allowed you to switch gears and how quickly did that occur? Classically, I'm not a virologist and, and what our laboratory focuses more on is uh, how your body defends itself against bacterial infection. However, many of the same sensors that sense bacteria also can sense viruses. So we're able to use the knowledge that we've gained from these other studies and apply them to a new situation. Dr. Stauffer, is there anything else you can think donors or other people uh, interested in Cleveland Clinic's research would like to know about the, the work you're doing related to COVID-19? I think one of the exciting things that we do in my lab is we try to develop a picture, if you will, a snapshot of how the enzyme, the main protease involved in processing, this is what allows the virus to multiply. And by getting that snapshot, we can actually, almost like a hand in a glove, design inhibitor molecules to stop it in its tracks. It's a very fast moving time right now in terms of developing therapeutics. The goal really is to get safe and have as many shots on goal as possible. When it comes to developing a drug and a therapeutic, it really takes an army of people over a decade, in some cases for certain diseases. We don't have that luxury. We need to move very quickly. At the Cleveland Clinic, where we're in advantage is where we have resources in structural biology, molecular pharmacology. We have a, a team of medicinal chemists. And we're positioned well to advance this cause right now, to bring these different disciplines together to help push the science and contribute to the effort. I also think an, another interesting aspect of your group is that it's associated with a hospital. Most of the time when there's a group assembled like yours, it's within a company. Uh, so can you speak a little bit to, to that? I have the beautiful opportunity to work with physicians across the Institute and hear firsthand about uh, the kinds of challenges they're facing with their patients. And certainly with COVID research, we have the opportunity to, to access patient samples. 
and try to study the kinds of symptoms they're battling, but also what's happening in terms of the tissues that we're isolating and studying. So that's not something you have or see every day in a large or medium-sized pharmaceutical company. What is your experience with being at the Lunar Research Institute in the Cleveland Clinic? How is that an advantage to both of you for developing therapeutics that you're interested in? What I find so impressive is not just the access to knowledge, but the collaborative nature of the researchers and clinicians here at the Cleveland Clinic. We all really do try to pull together to tackle these questions in a logical and thoughtful way for the best benefit for uh, patients. I can't understate that. I mean, I I have to say even um, the number of seminars and uh, task force and uh, just people coming together in my own group trying to understand the basics and the progression of this disease, all of these things really make a difference for us here in the work we're doing. The U.S. government and foundations are heavily invested in COVID research. Why is philanthropy from private donors also needed and how will it make a difference? Oh, philanthropy is key to acting quickly and being able to develop these new projects and new ideas and apply them quickly to patient care. For example, we're submitting a grant next week that will have to undergo peer review and processing. Philanthropy allows us to pivot faster and to also put in place other resources that multiple investigators can use, such as the COVID-19 registry. Here at the clinic, we truly are a team of teams, and philanthropy can help multiple groups at the same time accomplish multiple goals and attack this question uh, from many different angles. Especially with, you know, the race right now, to come to grips with this disease and actually find the breakthroughs that we need to progress to clinical testing. And potentially, if we have a broad spectrum therapeutic, broad meaning that it would hit not only the SARS virus that's currently causing COVID-19, but other future coronaviruses, we need all possible sources of funding and resources to combat this disease. And I think the speed at which philanthropy can contribute to that has got to be the number one. This is something that I've I've talked with my, my parents about somewhat, and they say, well, you know, I'm not a millionaire, but really every little that helps. Small gifts can make a huge difference in our ability to do the necessary research to come up with better therapeutics or preventative measures for COVID-19. Thank you. We wish you the best in your research and we're grateful you took the time to give us an inside look at your current research taking place at Cleveland Clinic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.